how do you rate your self-confidence in a scale of 1 to 10? That is what we talk about tonight on Y254. Our topic is how to build self-confidence. Talk to us across our social media platforms. That is at Y254 channel. You can also reach me at Patricia Morioki. Tonight's topic is something that is very... It's a topic or an area that is very dear to me. It's something that I'm very passionate about. And to be here and have this opportunity to really have someone with us in the studio to talk about this even in a point where we try to look at uh, kids probably based uh, 9 to 12 years and also that is preteens and teenagers. It is going to help us or you as a viewer to really understand what do we really mean when you talk about self-confidence, when you talk about validation, how are you going to be able to compare yourself with others but not have that um, impact or affect your life in a negative way? How are we able to probably uh, benchmark ourselves based on how our peers are doing in a very positive way without putting pressure in ourselves? We also try to look at ways in which how our parents, guardians and also teachers get to contribute to the self-esteem of young kids that is either they have a low or a very high self-esteem. With us in studio tonight we have Coach Paps who is the founder of Reconfidence Coaching Thank you very much for finding the time to be with us tonight. Thanks for having me. And my first question to you would be, when we talk about confidence and mm -hmm. when we talk about self-esteem, uh, sometimes when certain things are missing from all these, it is because of probably there's a certain insecurity somewhere mm -hmm. in your life or you've had an experience mm -hmm. with insecurities. So where do you think insecurities come from? First things first, everyone was born confident. Mm -hmm. You are the sperm that won. Uh -huh. You know, the yeah. formation of your life was actually confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, children were bulging their mother's stomachs unapologetically. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't care. Uh -huh. And then when you came to the uh, delivery room, we shout, you know. <laughs> yeah. You just cry your lungs off. When you're young, you used to ask for anything, mm -hmm. anything you wanted. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, life and the due course of socialization, upbringing, mm -hmm. kept on chipping away on confidence. Mm -hmm. And so reconfidence is actually about acknowledging I was born confident, mm -hmm. I lost it, and mm -hmm. I'm coming back to it. Okay. And that is what all our coaching work is all about for children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is the preteens and teens, 10 to 19. And mm -hmm. then for women, because we also bring alongside women as future mothers and also as current mothers who are able to influence their children in a powerful way. Mm -hmm. And then also mentors mm -hmm. in terms of teachers, whether in schools, in churches, to just bring them alongside as people who are very instrumental in making children believe in themselves. And why? It's because behind every adult, mm -hmm. Actually, within every adult is a child. Yeah, it's true. You know, and that child probably was influenced by people who are ignorant. Mm -hmm. Even for those who lost, who lost confidence, we had negative voices in our upbringing mm -hmm. that kept on chipping our confidence. So how can we be the positive voice to the children who are growing up around us? Okay. So that is my concern. Uh, where do, when we talk about insecurities then, where do they come from? Because I can say also, like as an individual, I have had insecurities. Mm -hmm. There are also insecurities that um, Me too. I'm dealing mm -hmm. with. So where do all these come from? So number one is insecurity. The root of insecurity in terms of uh, classifying emotions is fear. Mm -hmm. It's just fear. I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I'm not good enough. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid people will not like me. Mm -hmm. I'm afraid I need to keep on stepping up and looking a certain way or, you know, just be a certain way to be liked. Mm -hmm. And so the root of it is fear. And that fear now starts influencing our behavior, mm -hmm. you know. And of course, we now keep on manifesting it in different ways, whether it is quietly, because there are people who are introverted and they are insecure. Yeah. We have people who are extroverted like us who are loud mm -hmm. and clear out here but this depicting insecurity. Mm -hmm. You know, so number one it is to understand the root cause is fear. Mm -hmm. I need to face my fears and confront them. Yeah, like our program for children is called Facing Giants. Mm -hmm. So probably even if you are an adult, you need to face that giant called fear and just tell yourself, you know what, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm afraid of. This is what um, just keeps on probably triggering insecurity in me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what it is. And for you to acknowledge that actually takes a lot of confidence, mm -hmm. which is actually confidence is getting past that insecurity, but yeah. it also takes confidence mm -hmm. to be able to confront and call yourself out instead of waiting for others to call you out. Mm -hmm. yeah. when, you, when you mentioned uh, sometimes insecurities come from not feeling good enough, do we really have to feel good every time? Mm -hmm. Do we? First of all, it is uh, one of the things I usually say, first of all, understand 
the longevity. First of all, insecurity is not a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes it comes from comparison. Mm -hmm. I'm comparing myself to someone else. Sometimes I can actually feel insecure and then I start probably working towards it because like I said, it's fear. Mm -hmm. And so you need to ask yourself, why is this fear here? Mm -hmm. What is it telling me? What can I do about it? Mm -hmm. How can I embrace it instead of resisting it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you embrace it, then that fear becomes useful and helpful. Mm -hmm. And so first of all, it's important for you to ask yourself that. Why? Mm -hmm. Because we feel insecure different episodes and for different reasons. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that I will say, every time you have more than 25% or fearful episode, paranoia, any kind of emotion that is overwhelming in a negative way, every time it goes beyond 25%, mm -hmm. it's a red flag. Mm -hmm. And so it's about making sure even per day, if it's more than six hours, it's toxic mm -hmm. because that is the quarter of a day. Okay. Like make sure it doesn't overwhelm more than the quarter of your life and quarter of your time. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like positive or negative emotion. Mm -hmm. It's just something that is coming to give me some information. Every emotion, whether it's fear, whether it's anger, whether it is sometimes even feeling embarrassed, ashamed. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just supposed to be temporarily there. And then I need to embrace it and ask myself, what is the use of this emotion being in my space and then go beyond it. Okay. Yeah, so that place of being able to go beyond it sooner mm -hmm. is actually the trick where confidence lies in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even when you fail, mm -hmm. to be able to pick myself up and move on, 25% mm -hmm. is the recommended time. Mm -hmm of staying down okay yes when we talk about self-awareness and with your intention to uh, make sure that young kids are aware of who they are they love themselves how do you plan to literally actualize it to uh, to make sure that a nine-year-old really gets to understand what self-awareness is. How mm -hmm. do we break it down to them without like giving them these ambiguous words mm -hmm. or without like giving them these big things that probably they're not even oh, yeah, so aware yeah. about. So how do yeah. we break it into bits for them to really understand what we mean when we talk about you need to be self-aware as a young girl and as a young boy. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a program that is actually running mm -hmm. where uh, uh, this season we're doing self-mastery mm -hmm. in terms of this child understanding themselves. And one of the things you Usually, uh, first of all, as my approach, is to help this child understand the resources they already have. Mm -hmm. You know, to just help them discover that, do assessments. Mm -hmm. And you'll be amazed at how brilliant children are. They don't get overwhelmed with information. The only thing that overwhelms them is too much data. Mm -hmm. But if you're giving them some reflective things, which coaching is about reflection and self-reflection and being able to look at themselves and see their potential, mm -hmm. and then also now helping them use that potential to mm -hmm. solve problems out here. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things with self-mastery is helping that child to know how they can change the world, mm -hmm. as young as they are. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things we tell children in our program is that you are not born to change the world in future. Mm -hmm. You are born to change the world yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. You know, so what are some of the giftings you have? What are the abilities you have? What is your personality in terms of self-awareness? Mm -hmm. Because when this child knows themselves, first of all, they embrace themselves, they accept themselves, and children are so powerful at this. Mm -hmm. They don't have as many self-doubt and insecurities as we adults have. Mm -hmm. Once they, they're like, wow, I didn't even know that about me. Ah, oh, an image, you understand? Mm -hmm. You know, I really like who I am. I'm very cool even if I'm not talkative. Mm -hmm. You know, because maybe they grew up in an environment where everyone made them feel wrong mm -hmm. for being who they are. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe they've been brought up in a family of people who are all hyped, and then now they are quiet and they feel awkward because mm -hmm. everyone makes them feel uncomfortable. So they come to our program, you're like, no, you're cool. You know, just fulfill your purpose quietly. Mm -hmm. And then the loud ones, you are okay, keep, yeah. uh, keep on the volume, <laughs> you know? And that child feels good about themselves. And mm -hmm. of, of course, the other thing is also looking at what is the obstacle to your, probably to your, one of the questions I ask them, what hinders your brilliance? Mm -hmm. You know, as much as you know you are brilliant, because every child knows they are brilliant. When I was growing up as a teenager, I used to feel very stupid, mm -hmm. and it's because uh, probably my brilliance was measured with performance. Mm -hmm. First of all, I was not thriving in maths, mm -hmm. you know, and looking back, I was okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, you the know, matrix and, and of not, <laughs> was not your thing. <laughs> yeah, that is not where we were thriving and prospering. But mm -hmm. we are so good in many other things. Yeah. And it's about helping this child discover what is their own brilliance. Mm -hmm. Not the brilliance according to the measure of the world or academic world. Mm -hmm. But for every child to know that they are brilliant and then to share that brilliance with the world. Okay. And I think that is the bottom line of our conversations with children. And every child, regardless of whether they are an A student or a D student, once they discover their brilliance, they will find their way. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the future doesn't depend on books. Like mm -hmm. our time when you are growing up, right now it's depending on personal brilliance. Okay. Yes. Uh, when you talk, when you have these kids coming for the coaching, mm -hmm. I am sure it takes a lot. As they say, it takes the society to bring up a child. Mm -hmm. uh, when they 
walk in and they are going through this training. For you to make sure that uh, whatever you teach them for, for the hours that you get to spend with them does mm -hmm. not go to waste, mm -hmm. how do you now engage the parents to make sure that they are also contributing? Because I'm sure you probably give them an activity oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, when they go home. Yes. So how has it been engaging the parents of these kids in mm -hmm. terms of how you people are able to communicate the mm -hmm. progress mm -hmm. and some of the challenges that they, you get to identify from the children that yeah, you're so dealing uh, with? Yeah, yeah. So first of all, when we are intaking the children, we usually ask the parent, what are you concerned about your child? Mm -hmm. You know, so that we are also factoring in that in our personal conversations because our programs are custom made. Mm -hmm. You know, as much as that is the parent's concern, I want to make sure it's the child's concern, not because the parent wants it to be a concern, mm -hmm. but because the child is also concerned about that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's also bringing it to that space. Is it the parent's fear or it's actually a genuine concern that is with the child? Mm -hmm. So that has been very, very powerful. And of course, the other thing, we put parents in a broadcast because we do these uh, classes on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So we put the parents on a broadcast on WhatsApp and every day we send assignments and we also ask the children to get feedback from the parents. Mm -hmm. So like this evening when I had that class at around five, I was asking those children, did you ask your parents what they think you are good at mm -hmm. in terms of your abilities? Mm -hmm. So what does that, that does, it's first of all, the parent affirming the child, yes. which maybe they have never done, mm -hmm. or they've never even thought about, oh, yeah, by the way, you're good at something, mm -hmm. you know? And also for the child to hear their parents affirming them and mentioning things that they're not thought about. Mm -hmm. And I think that has been very, very powerful. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing is to also put in activities. Can you believe we are actually teaching the children about SDGs? Wow. Yeah, the sustainable development goals, because we are telling them until you understand this concept, mm -hmm. and of course they are cartoons, mm -hmm. yeah, but their parents should encourage their children to watch those version of children, the SDGs for children, mm -hmm. because there are a lot of videos out there that even a child who is as young as six can understand, mm -hmm. so that they are looking at themselves as world changers. Mm -hmm. When that child gets that mindset early, I mean, they, they're able to even influence their own families. So we, are, we, we have activities that they need to do to fulfill the SDGs. Can you imagine even switching off the light? They're participating in the renewable energy mm -hmm. and saving water, water and sanitation. Like they start realizing everything I'm doing actually vibrates into something bigger, which, which is SDGs. Mm -hmm. And so also having them do that in their families, because we also send that list of the things they need to do to the family. Mm -hmm. And this is beyond the program. Okay. Like you guys need to be aware about SDGs, even about education. Have you called on that child who is not able to access education because they can't afford Wi-Fi and mm -hmm. their parents are on Mulika mm -hmm. So maybe the last time you saw them was March. Have you ever been concerned that that child just needs you reaching out to them and encouraging mm -hmm. them and of course even eradicating poverty what are you guys doing as a family mm -hmm. even including uh, reducing wastage in our family we don't throw away food when you have left over you keep know, it in yeah. the fridge or even on the floor and eat it tomorrow mm -hmm. and so it changes the mindset of the children and families as well and so approaching it from all these uh, dimensions that we've been sharing with the children mm -hmm. and involving the parents in the process has been very transformational, especially when the parents are now sharing, like my child has really changed, my child is more responsible, mm -hmm. you know, my child is more ex expressive, my child is more confident. Mm -hmm. Those are the testimonies that keep me going after the program. Okay, yes. uh, that must really motivate you so much. A lot. You've talked about affirmations, yes. uh, that is parents affirming their children. Mm -hmm. And I would say right now, um, our generation is struggling with um, issues that they're going through right now, it is because some of them were not affirmed. Some of them were not validated when they were young. Your parents probably didn't tell you that you were beautiful. They didn't tell you that you were mm -hmm. good at something. Mm -hmm. So people grow up with these um, insecurities, these fears, because probably at that point, there was no one who was there to highlight the good in them. And we've had issues where I'm sure everyone, even people watching us tonight, you've uh, been in a situation where you've had a parent argue with or probably reprimand the child and use his really oh, yeah. uh, bad and very strong yeah. words. Mm -hmm. So how can parents watching us tonight mm -hmm. uh, or how can people probably adopt to validating children, especially at a young age, so that we are able to now bring up people who are aware mm -hmm. and are so, so much self-aware about who they are. Mm -hmm. So number one, uh, concerning affirming a child or not affirming a child, one of the places I always encourage parents to start know your child's love language. Mm -hmm. Most of the times the people usually call black sheep of the family, it's because everyone was speaking to them in Greek and they could not understand Greek. So sometimes th there's a child who doesn't care about affirmation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so leave them alone, find out what else works for them. But that child who is very fragile in terms of wanting to hear it, wanting to hear words, mm -hmm. wanting to be encouraged, wanting to be affirmed, and one of the things we usually say the ratio is, mm -hmm. for one criticism, you give seven mm -hmm. encouragements. Mm -hmm. So if I criticize you once, 
You know, why did you do that? Then I need to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You are kind, you are good. Yeah, that is good. You look so good. Yeah, I love the way you dance. Mm -hmm. Do seven mm -hmm. so that you can heal that child's mm -hmm. um, probably from the self-doubt. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing about affirmation is also to make sure you give it genuinely. The other thing I always encourage parents, give affirmation on who the child is mm -hmm. in terms of probably qualities they have, not just the looks. You know, because sometimes we also flatter children a lot mm -hmm. and they actually know they really suck, mm -hmm. you know, because you just want to tell them positive things. Mm -hmm. Make sure those things are thoughtful and they have to do with their nature more than just their appearance. Mm -hmm. You know, not always you are cute, mommy, mm -hmm. you are, you know, you are handsome, you are all that, because sometimes that doesn't count. Mm -hmm. How about you are kind, mm -hmm. you are intelligent, you know, I like the way you solve that problem. In, in a way of even making it more specific mm -hmm. in terms of the affirmation so that they know which quality mm -hmm. they should keep on building up. Okay. And the other thing, sometimes also tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. That is part of affirmation because out there in the world they will get yeah. feedback mm -hmm. on what is true. Some, sometimes they'll be told you're not good at this because competence is a child being able to know what they are good at and what they are not good at. Mm -hmm. And you should be honest about those two things. Mm -hmm. So that what they are not good at, they are not wasting too much time on it sometimes because sometimes that may be not a way they are inclined. Maybe they are just comparing themselves with their friends. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it's not good in football, you guys have paid one term, Melipa coach, Mdoto mm -hmm. Bado Hashain. Yeah. You know, it's also good to call it a day mm -hmm. and just tell them, Mommy, I, I don't okay. think you are good what in. they love. Yeah, They're can we try music? Yeah. You know, learn to give children honest feedback mm -hmm. Yeah, instead of just... Um, massaging their ego mm -hmm. because out there they'll be told the truth and they might be so hurt and crushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so make sure that you're also giving them as much as you are affirming them, sometimes affirm them on what is not together for them because knowing the truth sets them free. Okay. Yes. Uh, I've been looked at uh, children. Let us now look at teenagers mm -hmm. and uh, young adults or let's say young people. Yeah. This is a group that, um, especially the now generation, is a group that is quite difficult to tame around certain things <laughs> but cool. we know uh -huh. it is this the group that uh, is doing best on social media but uh, deep true. inside uh, we have issues that we're struggling mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. we're dealing with confidence we're dealing with um, self-identity we lack probably some of the most uh, mm -hmm. or the most important things that really define who we are mm -hmm. so for the young people who are watching us tonight and I'm struggling with my self-esteem I wake up sometimes that I don't feel good enough. I wake up, I'm going through this experience, mm -hmm. I don't know how to, I don't know where to tap the yeah. strength from. Yeah. How can they be able to develop yeah. this self-esteem? And is it late? Mm. Well, it's never late. Even the 90-year-old should still work on their self-esteem. Mm -hmm. But of course, when it comes to teenager, one of the things that I always encourage everyone around teenagers is authenticity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've seen people who have masks, people who have makeup, mm -hmm. people who don't want to be real with them, sometimes mm -hmm. including parents. Mm -hmm. You know, and teenagers are looking for human beings, mm -hmm. people who are true. Mm -hmm. And that is why sometimes that is what they are looking for on the screen. They're looking for just someone who is authentic, mm -hmm. whether it's on phone, whether it's online, mm -hmm. everywhere. And so probably we can be more real people around them, people mm -hmm. who relate to them, people who are able to even share my bluffs as a teenager, mm -hmm. which is something I really love doing, like even in the mentorship programs I do. I tell them where I really sucked as a teenager in terms of uh, things that were negative about me that I should have worked on. Mm -hmm. And also I tell them my struggles. Mm -hmm. So make sure you tell them your stories as a teenager and also your struggles mm -hmm. as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Let them understand one day you are there because sometimes you are not relatable. Mm -hmm. You know, whether we are mentors, whether we are parents, sometimes you're not relatable. And so they actually see some another fake person or no. Mm -hmm. You know, they just keep on five minutes into your conversation and they're feeling half fake. Mm -hmm. You know, and they just switch off. Mm -hmm. But the other thing is that they are also looking for help. If there's anyone who needs help, it is teenagers. Mm -hmm. And they're looking for it. I yeah, don't think that they're just sufficient just because they have headphones and they look cool and they feel like they have it together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes those are walls that they're looking for someone to come and just remove them and have real conversations with them. Mm -hmm. You know, and they need someone they can trust. The other thing I always say, don't be ignorant. Yeah, don't be ignorant. As much as you're coming to mentor them, make sure you also know what is happening in their space. Mm -hmm. You know, mentor them from a place of understanding or sometimes also from a place of inquisition. Mm -hmm. Instead of telling them, see, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, ask them about Sikuzetu. And Sikuzao. that is where I was getting to. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, I've been in platforms where you're talking to young people. Yes. And probably in the crowd, there's someone who is um, 
older than you and they'll come there and they'll tell you siku zetu pia sisi tulifanya tuliona and all that and they will not open up to this person they'll come and open to this person that they feel they they can relate yeah, to, to their peers so mm -hmm. how is it that a parent mm -hmm. uh, guardians um how can they be able to cultivate or mm -hmm. have a very good environment mm -hmm. and create a space where as a young person I'll feel very free to come to you mm -hmm. and tell you listen this is what I am going through mm -hmm. how can they be able to take that without the first thing that they put his excuse to yeah. to lifanya yes to first listen and understand mm -hmm. where I'm coming from because generation the generation that you grew in is mm -hmm. not the same that I'm growing in right very now true. so how are parents and people who are much older than us how can they relate and help us mm -hmm. bring uh, better or have better conversations with teenagers mm -hmm. so number one come from a place of curiosity mm -hmm. when you're approaching them you want to learn mm -hmm. You know, you want to learn their opinions, you want to learn their perspectives, you want to hear. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, don't wait for crisis to have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Learn to schedule conversations with teenagers. You're like, today I want us to have this chat or at least look for teachable moments. Mm -hmm. I usually say, maybe we are watching something and something comes up and I'm like, hey guys, can we discuss that? Mm -hmm. You know, look for teachable moments instead of just waiting for a book journey up, a book any up. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. That moment usually is a shutdown. Mm -hmm. Look for natural opportunities to bring up conversations. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, learn to schedule positive moments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like taking your children out. And one of the things I usually encourage, that still comes to the comparison, learn to individuate your child. I mm -hmm. think I'm very big in individuation because that is something I really yearned for when I was growing up. To just feel like, mm -hmm. you know, like let them know they are an individual as much as you have 10 children. Mm -hmm. But they know that in 10 individuals, mm -hmm. not a group of 10 children, let them also feel that effect of I'm special. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, even scheduling time, and I usually say it's not something very fancy. First of all, understand the child's uh, love language. Mm -hmm. Come on into a gift, maybe buy them a gift that you can start a conversation this from. This is a new one because most of the times when you talk about love languages, we're only thinking about that in romantic relationships. Ah, so I yes. think it's a new one when you get to talk about um, as parents identifying your kids' love language. Very important. And I would like us to talk about uh, self-esteem. Yes. Like where is it that we, where should we, should it depend on? Because let me tell you, different people have... Um, different opinions on where their self-esteem or like what mm -hmm. their self-esteem depends on. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the positive things that we can use to gauge on how we're doing in terms of the growth of our self-esteem? Mm -hmm. So um, maybe to discuss the inputs to our self-worth. Mm -hmm. Let me call it self-worth mm -hmm. because esteem is a bit general in terms of my perception around my environment. Actually, when I'm defining self-esteem is how I feel about myself in relation to my yeah. environment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because there's nobody who struggles with insecurity when they're in the bathroom or the toilet mm -hmm. alone. You actually struggle with it when you get out. Yeah. So it has to do with other people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when I'm alone, I'm actually okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and then when I come around you, that is when I'm like, she's mm -hmm. looking at me, maybe it's my hair, maybe yeah. it's... You know, but if I was alone, I'm just like, yeah, I'm okay, I'm okay. You know, so one of the things about our self-esteem is first of all to understand what are my struggles on self-image in terms of how I see myself. And then number two, also my, my um, self-esteem is self-image. And then number two is self-worth in terms of what is the price tag I put on myself. Mm -hmm. And then of course, it also has to do with self-perception and per perception of others mm -hmm. because sometimes my uh, i was actually saying there's nothing like high or low self-esteem it's just a healthy self-esteem mm -hmm. because everybody gets a dive every now and then mm -hmm. everybody doubts themselves so being able to come back to health it's just the way you get sick mm -hmm. and then sometimes you are you can't be too healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just healthy and then sometimes you are unwell. Mm -hmm. And so life keeps on putting us through that dive and being able to come back to health mm -hmm. is what is important concerning our self-esteem. But it has to do with our self-image and number two, our self-perception in mm -hmm. terms of what I think about myself and then what I think about how I look. Yeah, because there are so many teenagers and even adults who are struggling with self-image issues okay. in terms of thinking about my potty, my hairline, my forehead, my forehead, my dents. <laughs> uh, how, how much does uh, emotional stability uh, contribute or what impact does um, a person being emotionally stable mm -hmm. contribute to them having a good self-esteem or does it even matter? Well, it has everything to do with emotions because how I feel about myself is what manifests in my behavior, in my attitudes and in everything. Mm -hmm. And just like the way I'd said, there is no positive or negative emotion. It's just about how I respond to it. Mm -hmm. I usually say emotions is like rain. Mm -hmm. You know, when it's raining, the farmer is smiling. 
and the person who left their clothes <laughs> hanging yeah. outside and they were almost dry is stressed yeah you know so emotions are neutral mm -hmm. until you assign meaning to them mm -hmm. you know so an event happen happening is neutral mm -hmm. so probably i came over there and shoved you it doesn't have meaning until you tell yourself something about it mm -hmm. you know until you give it meaning but is she crazy does she need some help mm -hmm. you know that would give you a, a different emotional reaction mm -hmm. from thinking negatively about me or thinking positively about me okay. and then of course now from the first of all interpretation that is when the, the emotion comes from mm -hmm. and so everybody instead of just trying to edit the printout you need to go back and change the settings Okay. So go and edit the document instead of trying to fix the printout. Mm -hmm. Even concerning our emotional stability. Mm -hmm. Because as long as I keep on getting the same output, if I don't change probably even my self-perception, how I judge myself, the other thing that is very powerful on uh, affecting our self-esteem is self-talk. Mm -hmm. What I tell myself about myself mm -hmm. and what I tell myself about you. Okay. Because sometimes that self-talk is my personal opinion about me and also about the people who are around me. Mm -hmm. And whatever I tell myself, if it's negative, then I'll get negative emotions automatically and then I'll start having negative reactions. Mm -hmm. So if I told myself something wrong about me, around you, every time I'm around you, I'll start behaving in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I usually call it the prophecy of doom. And so every time I'm around you, I start feeling insecure. Every time I'm around you, I start feeling unsafe. But it's because of what I'm telling myself about myself and mm -hmm. also about you. Okay. And so probably one of the things I encourage people, have a conversation about the person who is making you feel insecure. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, like sometimes I'm just kind of like, you know, I'm just kind of like, you know, 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 even if they were looking at you badly, it set you free, yeah, it set you So now as we get to the end of this conversation, we have social media. Uh, social media has um, affected very many things. Social media has uh, its positives and its negatives. Mm -hmm. But looking at our, uh, around self-esteem and confidence, I'll go on my phone and see that friend of mine, wow, she drives this car, she has bought this bag and mm -hmm. all that and all that. Mm -hmm. So how does um, social media, now the negative uh, part of it, how does this affect my self-confidence journey in my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So one of the things is to ask yourself, why are you in social media? Mm -hmm. Are you there to feed your insecurities mm -hmm. or to also add value? Mm -hmm. Because if you're coming on social media to contribute, your mindset is different from someone who is coming to gain. Mm -hmm. You know, to just pick, 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 and to feed my insecurities. Mm -hmm. But if I'm coming there to add value, probably even when I see you come, like, wow, that is cool, mm -hmm. I've contributed. Mm -hmm. Instead of just feeling, hmm, okay, more. Yeah, and the troll, you know? those who are so good at just Yeah, because we come to comments. troll, but mm -hmm. it's because you're feeding your insecurities. So why are you on the socials? Mm -hmm. That is one of the most important things young people need to ask themselves. Mm -hmm. And to ask yourself, how can I leverage on socials? Mm -hmm. What are the strategies I can apply? Of mm -hmm. course, all of us have those times of just scrolling up, yeah. you know, and, and it's okay. Into, yeah. Which is okay. Yeah, we find funny people and they just make our day. Mm -hmm. But it's also important for you to get on social and you get depressed within two minutes. Yeah, it's true. Nobody discouraged you, nobody talked to you, mm -hmm. and then you just have an emotional dive. Mm -hmm. So it's important to ask yourself, what is my motive mm -hmm. for being online? And also, how can I use this platform mm -hmm. to add value instead of just getting value? Okay. Because everybody has always something to give. Okay. Uh, Self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. This is something that I... Uh, it's very important to me. It's something that I try to do as mm -hmm. often as I can. So for people who are watching us to, to, tonight, and it's the f they have heard about self-evaluation, but they've really never taken time to really know what it is. Oh, yeah. How does self-evaluation help us build our self-confidence? Uh, mm -hmm. And how often should we do that? Should we self-evaluate? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so first of all, self-evaluation is just like cuts, mm -hmm. continuous assessment. Mm -hmm. But now these you ones, know? you have to do them by yourself. Very true, <laughs> but you continually assess yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like everybody needs to close their accounts in the evening and you just ask yourself, how did I do today? Mm -hmm. And then everybody needs to also go away. That is actually something I am big on. People need to retreat. Mm -hmm. Go somewhere where you're not needed, nobody cares. Take a break. You know, just take a break from life. Mm -hmm. You know, leave your screens behind. Leave your socials behind. Just go somewhere and be by yourself mm -hmm. and ask yourself, how am I doing? Without mm -hmm. anything, without anybody's opinion. Mm -hmm. And of course, the other thing I always encourage, self-awareness. Discover your giftings. Know what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Know what to play to. Know also what you're not good at mm -hmm. so that you just have a feeder of your whole package. Mm -hmm. You know, so that you don't even have a need to compare. Like personally, because I know my giftings, I don't feel insecure when other people have different giftings. I'm like, True. wow, mm -hmm. yeah, you are complimenting yeah. me. You know, yeah. I don't have that. It's so cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, like I'm not a good dancer. Like you're not or even dance. Say, like I wish I, I did. So you don't excited. say it with this negativity, just because you're like, wow, looks mm. so cool. I wish I could also do that. Imagine, uh -huh. even when you see people probably who look better than you, 
you learn to appreciate them because you have self-awareness mm -hmm. and you know that I look good as I am mm -hmm. and this is my story as well on where I am mm -hmm. you know so that I don't feel the need to compare mm -hmm. and even if I see someone who is better than me I admire them I appreciate them yeah. I affirm them because I'm already confident in who I am and I don't need to allow them to, f to trigger any probably insecurities in me okay yes. uh, so now as we wind up uh, social media platforms where people can find you probably someone who has watched us tonight and they have been um, inspired by what you have shared mm -hmm. how can they be able to reach reconfidence coaching yeah. uh, so I'm on social medias as, as Paps and Paps Wanyugi Paps Wanyugi on Facebook Paps Wanyugi on Insta Paps Wanyugi everywhere mm -hmm. yeah like that is where you will find me and of course also reconfidence with Paps is my YouTube channel yeah you can watch the videos I've done over there mm -hmm. yeah just on different conversations that I'm passionate about mm -hmm. Yeah, and some of them just self-film because I couldn't let that story wait for the <laughs> videographer okay. to come around. Okay, yeah. uh, thank you very much, uh, Coach Paps, for finding the time to be here tonight. I hope that you've learned a lot, and this is what I have to say from tonight's conversation. Confidence keeps us going even when we are failing. Be very intentional about building your confidence uh, muscles because no matter how smart you might be, you still need confidence and a good self-esteem to have a complete puzzle. We are all a work in progress, as I say, so let's not stop fighting to be the best versions of our imperfect selves. Give yourselves a chance. My name is Patricia Moriyuki. Enjoy yourselves a very good night.